What's up, everybody? This your boy, Bless the Best, coming at you again. It's a nice day right now. Sun shining. I think we probably get the daily thunderstorm, you know what I mean, here in Georgia. You get a thunderstorm every day in the summer around 4 or 5 o'clock, a little bit of rain. Then the sun comes back out and burn it off before dark. I love the South. Born and raised in the South. You know what I mean? White supremacy. Comes straight up the middle around here. You know what I mean? So we used to it. We learn how to move. It's crazy how fast we adapted and learned how to move. Being as we came all the way from Africa. That's right. I said it. Came all the way from Africa. And I know, I know some people gonna be looking at this like, man, what the fuck, what the, what the fuck is Bless talking about? You know, came from Africa, like, like where else did we come from? I mean, no, man, all weekend, all weekend, I've had several people come at me, telling me that none of us came from Africa in the slave trade. All of us was already here on Turtle Island. All of us were native, was natives to this land, North America. You black power guys, you black power guys came through in the 20th century and fucked everything up by telling us to vote when everything was already ours in the first place. Y'all came through and infiltrated the, the indigenous movements and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. So that's why I, would, I have to state, you know what I mean, that I'm descended from Africa. Because, you know, these days, you know, in this, in this internet age where, where information pays, especially unique, off-brand, pieced together, speculated ideologies, you know, long as you can find your niche, right? It's a group of people out there that's been waiting for a leader, for a new niche, you know what I mean? A, 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 a new niche that it accepts all types of weirdos, man, all types of weirdos. And the only thing it requires you to do is talk. Maybe hire a lawyer or two. Man, I almost got away with it. If it wasn't for those pesky pan Africans coming through, Trying to trace their shit back, you know what I mean? Trying trying to trying to reconnect, you know what I mean? Feel they got a thing for Africa in their heart, you know what I mean? They come through with all this and fucked up everything. So I have been looking for evidence that this is true. Dane keep popping up. Dane Callaway is screaming at the top of his lungs trying to convince niggas that they have absolutely no connection to Africa, which is, which is something that's debunked on its face. It's debunked on its face. So I got to digging around, you know what I mean? I didn't want to be biased, even though I do come into this with a, with a, a belief backed up by evidence sometimes somebody can come through with better clearer evidence to the contrary each and every time that happens i change my stance my opinions change as facts are revealed okay elders man elders i mean there's no substitute for time spent on this earth every day looking listening and learning that's the foundation of knowledge the first man looked at what was already here and and from that foundation of knowledge he copied things that god set into motion you know like animals and stuff like that and he learned that's how you learn so i started my searches i'm not telling you i went and dug through no fucking libraries 
and, and, and official this and official that. And 99 percent of the people that will watch this video and have some negative to say they haven't either this is the very beginning of my research very very beginning i mean i wouldn't even say it's it's, it's an infant stage yet it's in it's an embryo stage but i go in looking for free black people negroes indigenous whatever you want to call it right so I, if i see somebody like 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 an old person like an elder like giving an interview or doing some kind of lecture you know I me mean? i'll start right there so i'm just gonna play a little bit of this man i hope i don't get a copyright strike or nothing on my channel about this fair use fair use fair use I am trying to teach a lesson here. This is for educational purposes only, YouTube. Bear with me one time. Here we go. I hope y'all can hear this. And, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to get the popping right away. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to let this wind die down a little bit to make sure y'all can hear this. Because you don't need to miss this. All right. Let's try it. Now, the first question you'd ask, free Negroes in a time of slavery? <gasps> How could that be? Free Negroes? But it was. And the next question would be, well, how did they come to be free? How did it happen that there were free? Were they already here, free, living independent on their own land when the colonizers came, then became enslaved and turned into Negroes from Africa. Okay, that's the story. That's the story. Don't try to run from the story. Here we go. Negroes during a time of slavery. There were several ways in which they were freed. <laughs> we really have to look back to the time when the first group of Negroes were sold by a Dutch man of war in Virginia the first time for the English in the colonies and they were sold as indentured servants slavery had not yet evolved okay in my other video I mentioned how it's a, it's a technique in media where you mix lies with the truth. Truth, lie, truth, truth. Truth, lie, truth, truth. Get to the other end, it's truth, 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 truth. Mixing lies with the truth. That's what I see at work when I listen to the indigenous American preachers, that's right, indigenous American preachers try to convince me that Africa has nothing to do with my heritage. Walk with me. Okay. I forgot a point. Okay. Another thing that the indigenous preachers do is they try, they try to minimize slavery. They said that we had jobs and it was indentured servitude. I say it was kidnapping, whips, and chains until you fucking die, you run, or you somehow purchase your freedom. Now, here comes the part about the indentured servants. The very, very, very beginning, before, before the colonies was formed, walk with me to speak in the colonies but indentured servitude was what did the work in the colonies in the beginning the indentured servants and some of them were able to work off the indenture and receive the benefit of the indentured servants now the indentured servants worked from five to seven years and <laughs> okay the indentured servants that this elder is talking about at this point both white and black 
That's what she's talking about. And she's talking about Edgefield, South Carolina. That's about, I'd say maybe 35 minutes from where I'm sitting right now is what she talking about. I knew that South Carolina was the key to the whole thing. That's the reason I started looking there first. Let's proceed. At the end of that indenture, they were given a small piece of land, a small bit of money, a new suit, and they were on their own. The okay. If these black indentured servers was was um indentured indigenous, this part don't make no sense about what happens after the indenture. You don't think they would say, well, you know, then they would just they would just go back to their tribe. They don't say that. Say so they they said they in a strange land and they know where to go. What with them? The unfortunate thing is, though, that the people to whom they were indentured were not always kind. And in many instances, they died before they were able to work off the indenture. So it was really, in many ways, a cruel system. And frequently, the indentured servants, when they had a chance, ran away. Negro, and of course, if they were white, they could blend right into the population. It would be difficult to find them. If they weren't white, it would be difficult for them to blend in with society. And it would be easy to find them. Okay. The indigenous preacher tells me that it was black Indians everywhere, all over the place, all over the place in the South. So, why, so, so, it should have been harder for the white indigenous servant to blend in. But with the Negroes, <laughs> they could not blend into the population. And they'd be a standout wherever they went. So it was easier for the system of slavery to evolve for the Negroes than it was in some instances to keep the indentured servants indentured. So their own. The unfortunate thing is, though, that the people to whom they were indentured were not always kind. And in many instances, they died before they were able to work off the indenture. So it was oh. really, in many ways, a cruel system. And frequently, the indentured servants, when they had a chance, ran away. Negro, and of course, if they were white, they could blend right into the population. It would be difficult to find them. Incoming! Big, big bomb. Big, big bomb. Big, big bomb drop right there. But with the Negroes, <laughs> they could not blend into the population. And they'd be a standout wherever they went. So it was easier for the system of slavery to evolve for the Negroes than it was, in some instances, to keep the indentured servants indentured. So over a period of time, in all of the colonies, that system evolved into slavery oh. to the extent that over they were in South Carolina in because it was and so few Negroes there now, from the beginning. Not unusual in many instances for indentured servants that were white and black to marry each other. That go, you mix that it right up. That was good for the evolution of the system of slavery because the question would be then what would the offspring be, white or colored? The buffer class. So then the states, the smart the ass states, the colonies. They like moved to talk. into another stage of law in that just a drop of Negro blood made you a Negro. And they passed laws against the marriage of black and white. So then you had isolated a dark skinned group of people. Un no mention of Indian or indigenous. So far, by the way.
be protected and easily identified who made up the labor supply that was so badly needed in the colonies. Ba -ba -ba -ba. They were enslaved in perpetuity and they were bought and sold <clears throat> just like chattel. Chattel, chattel slavery. slavery. So that didn't exist. What evolved into a distinct that system didn't exist. of slavery in the colonies. In the non-existent now, colonies, I guess. They also ran away. But they were not able to blend into the population. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Again. And I don't want to get I don't want to get bold enough enough to show the screen. But right now, I'm looking at actual posters advertising African slaves classified as Negroes. That's what I'm looking at on, on the screen right here. I'm scared to show the screen because you know how YouTube is and as young as my channel is and as many indigenous preachers that this video is going to piss off, you know, the ones who um, who teaching that we need to go to court and prove that we're the owners of, of um, Turtle Island. They like lawyers. YouTube like lawyers. They got that in common. So I ain't going to show the screen. But walk with me. You get it. As easily as were the whites. Now we come to the question of how they got to be free. Uh -huh. On different plantations, there were different degrees of relationship and different qualities of relationship. In some instances, there were masters who were compassionate and appreciative of their slaves. They were slaves, but they... Something just hit me right then. Okay. Maybe these indigenous landowners were the black slave masters that I've heard about here and there. Hmm. Maybe they own research will reveal that they might owe the FBA some reparations. Ba -ba -ba -ba. That's my air horn. I ain't good at it. That's my bomb. Air horn and drop a bomb on that. Let's go. Recognize that the better they treated the slaves, the more work they can get from them. In addition to that, those who lived close, like the cooks, like um, valets and butlers. I came across, whoa, this wind is blowing. Thunderstorm is coming in. But check it out. I came across some more information. I was looking at names. I was trying to find, I was trying to find um, like a list of slave names because when I was researching something else before, I saw a list of slave names and um, I saw it was a mixture of more African sounding names and Hebrew names. And they said the last names of the people that was enslaved, the, the number one last name is Smith. The number two last name is Johnson. And the number three last name was Williams. My mother's side contains Williams and Johnson. Williams and Johnson. Just as a little, you know, just a fun fact. But let's go. And maids constantly coming in contact with the owners of the plantation. They had a closer relationship and in many instances came to have real affection for each other within that system. Stockholm Syndrome. One of the first instances in which a group of freedmen grew up, there were some men who came to this country and worked very hard and acquired and worked their slaves very hard and recognized that they were able to acquire and become wealthy because of the work of their slaves. She talking about white people and right they now. Would free them Not no indigenous. on their death. Maybe they would free a butler. Maybe they would free a driver. But they are free, they freed them 
out of appreciation how for slaves get free to help them acquire <laughs> They feed them frequently in such a way as to set up trusts for them so that they would be protected for the remainder of their lives because it would be extremely difficult to live as a free Negro when the status of Negroes was that of slaves. Where would you go? Where would you live? Who would take care of you? How would you exist from day to day? That. Why wouldn't you just go home? Go back where you came from if you were from right here, right? It shouldn't, it, it shouldn't matter where you was at. If you was indigenous to the land, you know your, 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 you know the way. North, south, east, west, hey man. That was the way of the time. Let's go. Become the question. This old lady lying Going back though. to the she, evolution she of slavery, there were some Negroes in this country then who had never been slaves. They came as- Here we go. Here we go, here we go. Now, she's talking about, she said, Negroes who were in this country that had never been slaves. This would be the indigenous people of Turtle Island. Okay, the indigenous preacher is, is, is doing a rain dance right now when he heard that, but what it does is illustrate the two different groups the slaves who came here as slaves lived and died as slaves from Africa and the people living on the land that had never been slaves now she gonna get into numbers in a little bit walk with me hold, hold your rain dance you might want to hold off on that for a minute indentured servants they worked off the indenture and then they became freemen where they were and that group their descendants would be those people who had never been slaves now that would be a very small see i tricked you i tricked you right then because just to show you how susceptible your mind is to the information that you want to hear she said the ones that were free were the offspring of black people who was free from indentured servitude meaning they were never slaves and they was free people on the land and their offspring built these communities now let's get into the numbers I'm gonna back it up a little bit and play that whole part again then she gonna get into the numbers. Group. But that would make up a free group. The group that would, the group freed by the masters would make up a free group. At the last meeting of the class, we were talking about the larger number of mulattoes in this section and some fathers were very considerate of their children. The region, and some of them stayed and lived in the region. Now, David has talked to you about this family that came from Africa and established itself in Georgia. Did you hear that? Yeah, hold on. Ba -ba -ba -ba. This family that came from where, sis? From where? Run that back. Frequently were very fair in color, not always. They would sometimes take on the coloration of the mother and sometimes be of color in between the mother and the father. And then sometimes they would be very white skinned. If they were very white skinned, then it would be easy to send them north or some other place and free them. There are many subtle ways in which that group became free. Get your popcorn and some ready. of them left the region and some of them stayed and lived in the region. Now, David has talked to you about this ready. family that came from Africa and established itself in Georgetown. They were all free. Huh? One of the largest and most prominent free Negro families was in Sumter, the Elliots. 
largest and most prominent black families that came from Africa in Sumter, South Carolina. Non-existent African in Sumter, South Carolina. And she's breaking down the different groups of free black people at the time. There are many subtle ways in which that one group more time became free. For the slow and some of them left the region and some of them stayed and lived in the region. Now David has talked to you about this family that came from Africa and established itself in Georgetown. They were all free. Mm -hmm. One of the largest and most prominent free Negro families was in Sumter, the Elliots. Elliots. I know some Elliots. That would give us a group of freedmen. There was another way in which they won freedom. Many of them were artisans, blacksmiths, silversmiths, and worked in the selected arts. And in many instances... Okay, right here is where one of the leading indigenous preachers that we have out there he says that Harriet Tubman was a very skilled train conductor. She could hold her fucking train on the track underground in a railroad. And that's why she was famous. She was one of the skilled black so-called free people. According to um, Reverend Galloway. Let's see what... what, what um, what the elder got to say about it. I'm pretty sure my goddamn Malcolm X tattoo, you can't hardly see it because it's so old, but my, I'm pretty sure my Malcolm X tat is probably older than most of these indigenous preachers. What the plantation owners did, they would let them go to Charleston and work, set themselves up and work in Charleston and they moved about as freedmen, but the money that they made came back to the plantation owner. That's fucked up. That's just fucked up. That's why I'm reparations, reparations, rep motherfucking rations. That's why. Because of this kind of bullshit, man. You know what I mean? I, I'm not hating on, I don't hate the indigenous preachers. I mean, it's a case-by-case -case basis, sir. Your family may well have been everything that you say they was, right? But you can't tell me that my family was also. You can't tell me that this population today, indigenous Turtle Island people outnumbered people that descended from slaves from Africa. That's the only point I'm making. Yes, we may be two separate groups. Both of them done dirty by the same people, man. Both of them done dirty by the same people. You want to blame all the, all the, all the mistakes on the Pan-Africans and just take all of the non-existent glory for the other group. We need everybody in this, man. We need everybody in this. And disrespecting the icons of the people that you don't come from is divisive. It's divisive. And that's the only problem that I have with you, sir, from this from this little tiny ass channel in a fucking backyard in Georgia. That's 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 my only beef. But let's proceed. And they gave the artisans some part of that. Many of these people were able to accumulate enough money to buy their freedom. And some of them not only bought their freedom, but they bought the freedom of their family members. There go you free blacks. So there were they several started ways communities in which they became from scratch. Free. There you go now, right there. Georgetown was an active seaport 
Charleston was the most active seaport in the state and in some ways in. Charleston is the key. Charleston is where the records are. A little bit later in this video, I might have to skip some because it's getting a little bit too long, but a little bit later in this video, this woman is reading from actual census. Primary source, according to Reverend Callaway. Primary source, according to the greatest researcher of the 20th century. This is uncovering all of this groundbreaking, earth shattering, history rewriting information since 2014. The South, so far as slave trading was concerned, and in Charleston, you had a very cosmopolitan population. It had the largest Jewish. Cosmopolitan. That means multiracial. Just in case somebody didn't know that. But if you clicked on um, Bless the Best Channel, you probably know that. Population in the United States at one time. And it had a very large free Negro population. Let's get to some numbers. And the free Negroes, according to what they did, varied from being wealthy to very poor. And in one instant, we have a record of a freedman who went to the courts and asked to be enslaved again because he could not take care of himself. And See, weakness and cooning, I mean, probably just as old as man. Right now she's describing that in some cases you had people that had been freed from slavery but couldn't make it and tried to get the court to order them back into slavery. That's crazy. But it parallels these days and times, man. You got, you got, you got niggas that don't want to leave the plantation because he's so addicted to all the white man's things, including his woman. So, Mr. Calloway, I hope that you're successful in um, starting your own country. I'm assuming that that's what you that that's what you're trying to do. Being as you got videos up on your channel about with the instructions to do it, so I'm assuming. That, that you're actually trying to do that yourself. If not, then disregard this um, well wish I'm giving you. I hope that you're able to do it. And I hope that you can set an example. We all in the same game. We just got different lanes, man. We just got different lanes. You need every lane to be complete. I digress. He needed someone to help him take care of himself. That would be extremely unusual. Within the group, there was division. The extremely light-skinned Negroes seem to think... Division is the biggest enemy. Division is the enemy. The way, the, the, the showy way, I know everything you don't know shit I'm a researcher you're a, a, a googler all that shit is devices you setting yourself apart in that way and by talking shit about them goddamn icons that's divisive that aids the other side sir I think that they were very much better than the very dark skinned negroes like me. That was a belief that was perhaps Pretty. engendered and promoted yep. by the masters. Black because don't they recognized yep. the more they could divide the slave population, the more secure would be their control. And winning strategy. Someone really ought to write a dissertation on group control when you think in terms of the large number of slaves over and against the small white population. And they were able to control them by dividing them. 
on the plantations. We've mentioned the drive. They are able to control them from the minority by dividing them into smaller groups and pitting those groups against each other. Damn. The plan ain't changed. The driver was perhaps the highest position of leadership. The scholar and the PhD is perhaps the highest level of the group. The fucking 10 percenters, right? Okay. The 5 percent nation, an offshoot of the nation of Islam. They're 85, 5, 10 rule, right? Okay, the group that they elevate and educate become the 10%. They say out of, out of the 100% of black people, 85% deaf, dumb, and blind. They have no knowledge of their history. They have no interest in knowledge of their history. They have no intellectual curiosity. And a man needs that, you know what I mean? So, the white people get this educated 10% and what the educated, t they allow them to be over the rest of the niggas, but not as high as the white man. So they use their knowledge to lead the 85% astray and to eat off the 85%. It's only 5% of poor, righteous teachers most mostly mostly elders some young you know what i mean they got the knowledge and they choose to use the knowledge to help the people as a whole without trying to elevate they self they got that shit right um, um it's a lot it's a lot wrong with, with islam and its offshoots but they nailed that shit they nailed it you see it every day, and, and that's what she's talking about right now. And that would be quote, unquote, for leadership that they had, and they placed him over and against the field hands and kept them divided. And then there were people who came into the colony, we begin with the colony and later the state, who were already free. And then we want to see the growth of the free Negro. <clears throat> the indigenous preacher would tell you the Negroes that came into the colony that was already free were indigenous Negroes. Maybe, maybe not. Let's see. Let's see what the elders say. Population in South Carolina. South Carolina. We're looking at the Charleston district. We are looking at the city of Charleston. We are looking at Buford. And we are looking at Georgetown. Now notice the low country, that each of these were the Geechis. The Geechis is, is African. In 1790, there were more than a thousand free Negroes in South Carolina. One thousand. Now 1790 is important to us because we associate that with the first census of the United States. The Reverend Calloway taught me when I was listening to one of his sermons. He taught me that. Census is a primary source. Now we get into the census part of this video. And I'm going to try my best to make this the last part for right now. I don't know. I might keep it pushing. I don't know. American Revolution was over. The United States, as a democratic republic, had been established. And this is what. Keep in mind. We just getting to that part where the United States government is being established. We just getting to that part. Let's go. The first census showed. And let's jump from 1790 down to 1860. 1860 is important because 1860 would be at the beginning of the Civil War. And in 1860, there were more than 9,000, almost 10,000 free Negroes in the state of South Carolina. 
That's the beginning of the Civil War. And in 1860, there were more Listen. than 9,000, almost 10,000 10, free Negroes in the state of South Carolina. 10,000 free Let's Negroes. Let's go back to 1790, however, and look across there and notice that in Georgetown, at that time, there were 113 free Negroes. In Buford, 153. In the city of Charleston, only 586. But in the Charleston, this beginning of the Civil War. And in 1860, at these there were more than 9,000, almost 10,000 free Negroes in the state of South Carolina. Remember who the ne Let's free go Negroes back to was? 1790, however, and look across there and notice that in Georgetown, at that time, there were 113 free Negroes. In Buford, 153. Very in the small city of Charleston, numbers. Only 586. Very, but very in the small numbers. Charleston district, you had the beginning of the Civil War. And in 1860, there were more than 9,000, almost 10,000 free Negroes in the state of South Carolina. Let's go back to 1790, however. And See, okay. Even though what I'm listening to leads me to believe to the contrary. I'm just gonna give the indigenous preacher all these numbers of free people at this period. We are going to assume that every one of these free people were indigenous people. How and, 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 little, and a little bit later, she's going to tell you how many were slaves. It's already been established that the slaves was enslaved Africans. How did the numbers get upside down from then till now? Let's jump from 1790 down to 1860. 1860 is important because 1860 would be at the beginning of the Civil War. And in 1860, there were more than 9,000, almost 10,000 free Negroes in the state of South Carolina. Let's go back to 1790, however, and look across there and notice that in Georgetown, at that time, there were 113 free Negroes. In Buford, 153. In the city of Charleston, only 586. But in the Charleston district. Now, can we say that the number of free Negroes in South Carolina was a lot less than the number of slaves? Can we say that now? I think we can. You had 950 and on down the line. Let's look at 1820, and we would choose 1820 because that would bring us just two years, um, yes, two years before the Denmark VC insurrection. And the Denmark VC insurrection. My son did a book report about the Denmark VC insurrection. I think he was in like like fifth grade and they called the teacher happened to be a, um a pro-black teacher and she said she told him that she wanted to meet his dad <laughs> that shit made me proud i used to do shit like that to fuck with them teachers every time they give my, my kids um homework like that i make sure that it's something that might just teach the damn teacher and that's what you got to do you got to put that shit in them from the house back to business. Notice how the population had increased in the state. There were six, better than 6,000 free Negroes in the state. 6,000? More than 3,000 were in the district of Charleston. 3,000? Half of them. In the city of Charleston alone, there were more than 1,000. Okay. 
I push forward a little bit. We get into a part, we get into to the question and answer part of this lecture that we listened to, right? And this guy, he's about to ask the lady, he was like, how did people come to be indigent servants? She's talking about, he's asking her about white people, because they stated earlier that white people came over and they worked as indigent servants for a period of time and then they was free, right? Listen to how some of the whites became slaves. They came here in the hulls of boats, establishing that that was already a practice. Check it out. Uh, how one became indentured? One sold oneself into indenture in many instances. But as the need grew for... As the need grew, as the plantations became larger and cotton was becoming king, that's what fueled the need for new slave labor. They was taking white people, any damn body. Why? That was the question I was asked. Why would they go, why would they go all the way across the ocean when they had the labor right here from the indigenous? That's what he said. Direct quote from a comment on my video. Who is Dane Calloway? And why is he here? Direct quote from that. Check it out laborers as they came into the colonies mm -hmm. all you had to do was to be so unwitting as to be young enough and strong enough and go to a pub in england and get drunk and then when you woke up pale faces. you found yourself on the high sea that's what they say pale faces in a ship pitching mm -hmm. and that was called shanghai they shanghaied a lot of young men out of england and then grew for laborers as they came Bring into the back. colonies. Listen. <laughs> All you had to do was to be so unwitting as to be young enough and strong enough and go to a pub in England and get drunk. And then when you woke up, you found yourself on the high sea in a ship pitching. And you found yourself on the high sea in a ship pitching. And all you had to do was be young enough, strong enough, and dumb enough to get drunk in a pub in London and get Shanghai. Or all you had to be was young enough and strong enough to, to venture off into the jungle in Africa and get Shanghai and find yourself pitching in the hull of a ship. It's very hard to believe, according to some people. That was called Shanghai. They Shanghaied a lot of young men out of England. And then, Africa well, too. you had to pay for your passage. You're on your way Late to the on. new world. So to work your passage off. So notice how unkindly not only the Negroes were treated, but all you had to do was be poor and peasant mm. and stupid and unprotected. Mm. But in most instances, The indigenous tribes um, didn't protect each other from pale faces. Was it y'all that signed all them goddamn treaties? Instances, people sold themselves into indenture because they felt that at if an we were in the new world, after they worked document. their indenture off, they were strong and healthy and they could make it for themselves. And many did, and some did not. All right, I'm gonna skip ahead again. So one more thing I want to get in before I end this video. All right, what I'm about to play for you now, she's going to talk about the 1790 population of South Carolina. Keep in mind, I keep pointing out that Charleston is the key. That's the seaport. That's where the African slaves arrived. That's a fact. That's the way African slaves arrived. Now, I'm saying that the free men that she's talking about are 
some ex-slaves who got their freedom through the different ways that was described earlier. Watch the concentration of the population, the low country. That's what they call the Charleston Seaport area of Georgia, South Carolina, going a little bit into North Carolina. We're talking about South Carolina right now. So, listen to where the concentration of the blacks are in South Carolina and the relation to the seaport where the African slaves came in at. Man, look, I went to college. I went to college um, for like a couple of semesters at this college in South Carolina, in Denmark, South Carolina. A little one horse town, you know what I mean? Basically the only thing there is agriculture and the college, right? So I'm from Georgia. It was a lot of students at that college from Charleston. That was my first time coming in contact with people born and bred in Charleston. On first contact, I thought that they were either Jamaicans or Africans. I couldn't understand shit they said. They had a different word for everything, like different different objects or whatever. Just like they had like a different language, man. It was it was you you had to listen when you talk to them. And I was like, man, what where, where, where you from? They like Charleston. We get you. We, we got a lot of we got a lot of African culture and I asked them about the words and they'll be like that's an African word but according to the indigenous preachers the slaves didn't come from Africa notice the state is divided into the tidewater region that's the low country low country tidewater it's divided into the lower pine lower pine belt the upper pine belt and the Piedmont. That's the rest of the state. And notice where the free Negroes were concentrated in the Tidewater section. Tidewater, low Did country. You see that? And are there any questions? There were almost no free Negro Negroes in the Piedmont section, but they were oh. Okay, Charleston was city. You know what I mean? The closest thing to city at that time. The rest of the state was rural. You would think that people that was already on the land would be in the rural areas, right or wrong. I'm just saying, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to think in a straight line without going around no corners here, that's all. Let's rock. Overwhelmingly concentrated in the Tidewater section. Let's look next at 1830. Hmm. And in 1830, there came to be a few more Negroes in other sections. Few. But Leaking the Negro out. population, the um, free Leaking Negro out. population had increased in the Tidewater section. And then if you Ex look at 1860, what do you see? I don't seem to have an 1860. Did you put she 1860 through on for the us, actual please? Okay. Papers. Primary Notice resources. the concentration is still in the Tidewater section. As it is now, today. are there any questions? As it is today. That you want to Direct ask descendants. About that? As it is today. Were the free Negroes just traveling away from where they had originally been? Was that how they in some instances, and I'm glad you've asked that question, uh -huh. because um, it varied throughout the period of slavery. See, at first, as they became free, in many instances, it took an act of the legislature to free them. And there would be no difficulty if a master um, specified in his will that Tom or Jane was to be free. All right. Skip forward one more time. Bear with me. All right. Here's where, here's where I get to be petty. You know what I mean? Here's where I get to be petty. Now it's my turn to get petty. Okay. We, we, we just get into the part about the black slave owners. Free black men who own slaves themselves. According, according to the indigenous preachers, the only free black men melanated 
Don't come at me with the fucking semantics because you know what the fuck I'm talking about. So don't come at me with the semantics now, okay? Said that the ones that was free, had never been slaves, was indigenous. Stand on that. Stand on that through this right here. What I'm about to play. And did I'm about. I'm just going to turn it off. It indicated that they were black who owned slaves. In 1800, Elias Collins on 68 slaves. John Williams on 7 in 1810. John Gardner on 40 slaves. Elias Collins on 11. Simeon Holmes on 11. All black people own these slaves. The number of black owned slaves owned into the 1830s. 1830s and 40s. The beginning of the Civil War. All the way to the to Civil War. Robert Michael Collins, who had the large rice plantation in Santee, and owned a number of slaves. How did these slaves make out, eight slaves make out after the Emancipation Proclamation? It was a problem. Before that, most of them, especially on the Robert Michael Collins plantation, he had a problem feeding his family, feeding his slaves. The slaves stayed in a lot of cases. They had no place to go. Borrow money free, from the state. Free, in the country you know nothing about. Slaves. Where to feed his slaves. Who were those people? Somebody tell me, somebody tell me. Indigenous preachers. Y'all got all the records. Y'all know everything. Who were those slave owners? And who were the slaves? So were, so, so were indigenous people enslaving their own people? Or were they enslaving African slaves? What were, were African slaves? So the only other scenario would be that an African slave would came over here, bought his way out of slavery, and became a slave owner himself. Either way, that debunks some of us aren't descendants of slaves from Africa. Either, either, either the indigenous enslaved their own people right along with the white man or it's a lie that it wasn't African slave. Indigenous preacher, indigenous, excuse me, preacher, pick one. This bless the best. Your host to the next post. Be one forever. <laughs>